What's up guys, Damien Keyes here. Today we're gonna to talk about making money as an artist. Something I've touched upon a few times in my other videos. Go back and check out on my YouTube channel things like stop selling music, stop selling EPs. I truly believe there is a way of making money uh, in today's landscape of being a musician, but I do think we need to think in a different way. The definition of madness is doing the same thing again and again, but expecting a different result. And I feel like that's where we're at in the music industry. And I also feel that musicians and the music industries are lagging behind other creative industries because of tradition, because they're holding on to that amazing tradition that we've had in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s of selling physical and wanting it to be the same when it just isn't. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna have a look back at history, we're gonna look back at the landscape from 20 years ago, we're gonna look then of why that doesn't work now, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at, look at the landscape of today and the next few years, and then after that we're gonna look at other creative industries that we can take these ideas and bring them into our own because there's other industries that are making a lot of money um, in being creatives that I feel like we should be adopting and stop lagging behind. So that's today is how we're gonna do this. Firstly, we're gonna go back in time to, I don't know, the year 2000. So in the year 2000, that was the most amount of CDs sold in one year. That was the peak of CD sales, the peak of physical distribution. That's why I've picked the year 2000. Now in the year 2000, nearly a billion CDs were sold. That is a lot, and that's, that's in the US. Now, if you fast forward to 2018, 50 million CDs were sold, 5%. So we know there's been like a crazy massive decline in CDs and other physical sales. Yes, I know you can talk about vinyl, but we're still talking small amounts and not huge amounts. So in the year 2000, um, nearly a billion CDs were sold, crazy big. That's why I've picked this time of how the music industry worked. Now we've all heard of these horror stories of how the music industry worked, but I wanna go into math today. I wanna go into math of why it worked, how it worked, and why that doesn't work anymore, and why we've gotta stop gripping onto these traditions. So we're back in the year 2000. I don't know, it's maybe a, I don't know, a Wednesday. You're in your band, you've just signed a major deal. Now the biggest selling CD of uh, the year 2000 was Hybrid Theory, which was Linkin Park's album, first album, um, sold 10 million albums. But you've just got signed and you are going to sell, you don't know this yet, but you're gonna sell a million CDs. Now you're like, holy shit, I'm gonna be buying a Ferrari, I'm gonna be making so much money, I'm gonna be on MTV, the cribs being like, check out my basketball court, yeah. That's gonna be amazing. But is that true? Is that what's gonna happen? Now you know I'm gonna say no, right? Because you're watching the video, we've all heard these horror stories, but why? Why does that not work? Well, let me tell you, you sell a million copies of a CD back in the day, 20 years ago. CD price at that point was, let's say, 15 pounds or 15 dollars. 15 million quid. That is cha -cha 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 ching That's a license to print money, yeah? Fantastic. Except the way that you signed your record deal, and this is the same for pretty much all record deals back in the day, was you don't get all the money, obviously. So out of the 15 quid, $15, it is broken down into parts. Don't forget, we've also got the, the shop that's selling the CD has to make its money, but the record label's taking a certain amount. So let's say the record label's taking about 50% overall. And that also has to include things like distribution, uh, it has to include um, the marketing side to it, it's got to include the manufacturing, it's got to include everything. So it's taking, say, eight, let's say eight quid eight quid out of the, the 15, 16 that, it, that the CD's been bought for. And you as the artist are usually on around about 10%. So you'll get somewhere between £1.20 and £1.50 for every CD sold. You're like, boom, ka-ching, that's no problem. 15 million quid sale, set CD sales and you're gonna take over a million. You're gonna take somewhere between 1.2 and 1.5 mil, woo, or are you? Because the way labels work is you've signed a record deal which says any money that is spent is kind of a loan to you. So let's break that down. Let's say you make a record. Now back then everything's a bit more expensive. <clears throat> In order to make a record um, it probably is going to cost you a quarter of a million, 250, 300, 350,000 in order to record your album. You go, oh, that's quite a lot of money. 
plus on top of that, then you've got the promotional costs. So it's like, well, we've got to get it on TV or on radio. All those things cost money. And so that's going to cost 50, 100, 150, 200,000 pounds worth of actual um, marketing to get this so people know about it. You go, oh yeah, I've got to pay for that. And then the record label are throwing parties because you know we need everyone to know about this. And you're like, yeah, party. And there's loads of champagne that's being drunk. And you go, wow, there's loads of expensive champagne. And the people who are drinking the champagne, the people from the record labels, that's right. And there's loads of expensive meals happening because the labels need to take out other people to schmooze them to get it on the radio. And this goes round and round and round. And then they're like, hey, we're going to put you guys on tour. And you're like, woo, we're going to go on tour. Now, back in the day, the way it worked was everything was revolved around the album. You'd get a promotional tour. That meant it was promoting the album. You got singles. So 13 to 17 year olds would go to town on a Saturday and they would buy a physical CD single or a vinyl single. It would cost somewhere between one and three quid. It was a loss leader. It meant it didn't make any money. But what it did was it promoted the album and everything was revolved around the album. The promotional tour promoted the album and all of this stuff, the merch promoted the album. Everything was just pyramid, pyramid, pyramid because if we can sell a million CDs, bang, that record label is going to make eight million quid or not not so much, but you know, four, five, six million quid. Then you've got everything else on top of that. So we're gonna put you on tour, it's gonna to be amazing. They're gonna they're gonna say, well, we'll pay 50% of the tour and you get 50%. But back then, tour, tour ticket prices were different. It's only been the last 10 years that, that going on tour is really making the money. So back then in, in the year 2000, or just before the year 2000, the average ticket price was about 22, 23 quid. I know, that's how much it costs. And we're talking for arena and stadium levels. It's only been recently that the money's really come into it. So everything's pointing towards the album and you are paying all of this stuff back. But here's the catch. So you're paying back part of the tour. You're paying back the marketing. You're paying back the recording. You're paying back the parties. You're paying back the promotion. You're paying all of this back, but not out of the 15 quid, out of the $15. You're paying it back out of your 10%. So all of a sudden, you've made your million minus the 300 for recording, minus the 200 for promotion, minus the 50 to 100 for touring, minus all the parties at the, at the most expensive swanky restaurants with all the champagne. All of a sudden, you're left with 100, 150,000 which then has to be split between all of the band members, your manager's taking 20%, etc., etc. You can see how it doesn't make the money because all of the money that's spent is coming out of your 10% and not the CD sales. So when we look back and say, hey, back in the day was amazing, was it? That's why you had so many artists that are so angry about their labels because they weren't making proper money. And, and you had these record labels with, with just, you know, 15 floors worth of people who, who worked in the offices. Now then, let's fast forward to today. Let's fast forward to today's market. Napster came along in 2001, ruined the whole physical sales. Then all of a sudden, instead of having physical sales, you could steal music. And at that point, it was a bit of a wobble, CD sales started to fall. Now after Napster, the, the floodgates had opened because music became digital and it wasn't attached to anything. It wasn't something that you, could, if you wanted to steal music before that, you'd have to shoplift. And we were like, no, I'm not prepared to shoplift. I'll steal music digitally, but I won't shoplift. That seems a step too far. Well, fast forward today, and it's not even stealing because now you legally buy all of the music in the world for free, effectively. If you want to not have adverts for it, then you pay a tenner. But that's literally how much we're paying. So music is free. But we're still determined to sell music. We're still determined to try. Now, how hard is it to sell music? So you're not selling music, you're selling the physical thing. You're selling nostalgia, or you're selling a memory, or you're selling something that you, as a keepsake, or you're selling guilt, because you're saying, buy this, you need to buy this, because I can't do this without you. You're selling those emotions, which are attached to now a CD, which we can't play anymore, because most of us don't have CD players. We don't have, you know, we have vinyl, but I buy old vinyl, so I'm more likely to go and buy Fleetwood Mac vinyl than I am going and, and buying something from, you know, the 1975, which I probably wouldn't have thought to buy on vinyl. So music, as we know, from a, from a physical form is there for, for keepsakes, it's part of merch, but we don't use it to play the music. If you look at the landscape, instead of everything pointing towards buying the music, it doesn't. Everything now is pointing to two new things, merch and tour sales. So back in the day, like I said, you went on tour, the tour would probably, tour tickets for, well, the, the Spice Girls in 1998, 
Torb at uh, Wembley Stadium that was that's eighty thousand people. Uh, gig pro- gig ticket fee was twenty three pounds, which is about twenty five, twenty six, maybe twenty seven dollars. Now in today's money, that probably works at thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven dollars with inflation. You look at today's ticket price. Last year, the biggest selling artist on tour was Ed Sheeran. Surprise, surprise. So Ed Sheeran went out and he made $435 million worth of tour sales to 5 million people. His average ticket price was $75 to $80. And he's pretty cheap compared to a lot of them. If you look at the Eagles who were touring last year, or the year before, they were bringing in $175 per ticket. Elton John, $170 per ticket. This is average. I'm not saying it's the lowest, it's average. Same thing with with Taylor Swift, $120 per ticket. You can see how ticket prices have shifted massively. That's a big part of where people make money now that they didn't before. It used to be promotion, now it's the game. If you look at merchandise, very, very different thing. Back in the day, everyone would go and get their Fruit of the Loom black t-shirt, stick your band logo on it, and they'd sell them at gigs, and they'd sell them through their website uh, for a tenner, 15 quid. That was fine. No longer the case anymore. Bands that do that are old school. And we need to look at other creative industries and the landscape of now. If we look at who is bucking the trend, who is ahead of the game when it comes to creatives, it's YouTubers. They are far ahead of the game. They understand the model of today. The model of today is how can we build the audience and monetize it? How you build the audience is not trying to sell them something that's free. It's giving them stuff. In YouTubers case, it's they make content. They make content day in, day out. And if they're making great content, it might be week in, week out. And they build that audience and then the way they're monetizing it is live shows, and merch, but the difference between the merch of yesteryear and 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 low end bands of today and merch uh, from YouTubers of today is it isn't just whacking a logo on and selling it. All of a sudden, these YouTubers are creating fashion brands. You go on their website and it's not a T-shirt; they're selling a whole shop. You can have. 15 different types of t-shirts and 12 different types of hoodies and six different hats and instead of just having their logo emblazed across it which is a bit uncool they've actually done something clever they've actually branded something in a way where you know it's theirs but it doesn't have Damien Keys written right across the chest what they've done is they've been cleverer and they've said hey let's have a, a word or a logo or a brand just like Reebok just like Nike just like all of those other fashion brands like All Saints like this where you've got a little a a, a little uh, whatever that is skull thing all of a sudden they do the same thing and they're selling it via their shop but you can see the difference in quality and you can see the difference in price they're not going and getting some cheap fruit of the loom t-shirts whacking anything off it on it and just hoping for the best they're going for the best quality but they're going to pay the best quality as well because you're going to get a hoodie that's just going to cost you seventy dollars eighty dollars ninety dollars but it's gonna be a really great quality hoodie that you'll wanna wear on a daily basis. Not just so you can go, it's got my name strapped across it, but also because it's actually something I genuinely would wear. But I'm gonna pay for that because it's a fashion brand and the quality represents that. But here's the best bit, because in the year 2019, 2020, 2021, we don't have to do what we used to do with CDs, which is buy a thousand copies to stick them under the bed. No, what we do now is we approach companies that will will print as many as you want, but they'll have a shop online that will, will do a cut off the top that will say, we will, for example, we will, for every hoodie that goes out, we'll take a tenner, and then you'll get the rest of it. So effectively, printing one in one out my book for example went on amazon i don't i didn't have to print any out the next book which is coming out in about a month's time uh, which is all for musicians will go straight onto amazon you'll pay your tenner i won't see any of them it'll go straight from amazon they'll print it send it to you i'll get 50 percent job done i don't have to i don't have to buy in bulk to send them out so you can see how you can start to build the audience which is the key and we'll come to the the point of entry in a minute so that you can monetize them with value, not take the piss out of people, but monetize them in ways that they want rather than trying to monetize them in forced ways that they don't want, which is what musicians are trying to do that other creative sectors aren't trying to do. And there's something else. So there's a guy called Rue Reynolds. Now, if you don't know who this is, you might have heard of his band. His band's called Enter Shikari. Now, this guy is amazing. He plays the game perfectly, and he doesn't think of it as a game. 
He just looks after his audience. So Enter Shikari, a really big band. They're doing a thing. He's always got time to meet people. He's always keeping on top of sending messages to people and that kind of stuff. He did a genius thing this month, which is he released a book because people want things. They want books, but they know they can't play, a, play their CD. So instead of making the CD, he made a book. And on this book, it is the lyrics and the, the, the meaning behind the lyrics, including you know, tour photos and other things like that, for a coffee table book for the fan base. There, that's what you can monetize. You can make something beautiful and creative and fantastic that people will hold and go, oh, this is a, this is a thing of beauty. And they will show their friends and they will post it on their Instagram, but they'll also leave it on their coffee table and they'll treasure it and they'll look at it and it will be a moment in time. Rather than trying to sell them something that they go, yeah, CD, yeah, I don't know what to do with it, but it's a nice thing to own. You can see the difference in vibe and feeling. He's done something which is just slightly different. He's done a tour, he's taken a bunch of pictures of the tour and he says, I want to share this with everyone in a book. He's charging 23 quid. Now, if he's done that via Create Space or if he's done that via a way that he can put that onto Amazon himself, he'll be taking 17 quid for a book. 17 quid. Go and sell a thousand of that. He just made 17 grand just from that one book, which he basically made via the tour. You can see that this is about looking after your audience and giving them things that they want as opposed to giving them things that you want them to have, which is a very different thing, which comes on to my last point. The point of entry, if you're going to do this, every single day, people come to me and they go, right, I've got my CD, what do I do? I've got my album finished, what do I do? The question, right, I know you're not going to like this, but I've done an EP, what's the best way of getting it out to people? And I'm like, you fucked it. I know you don't want that to be the answer. Watch all the videos I keep posting, you fucked it. You've come in right at the wrong pinpoint. You've basically got, oh, I've got my CD, well, print 10,000 of them and go and give them to people and say to them, here they are, they're free. It's going to cost you a fortune. Is that the right thing to do? It's the only thing to do because you can't just put it on Spotify and say, hey, favor for you. I'm giving away my music like everyone else in the whole world. You've missed it. Your best bet is to put a, a strategy over a year or two years before that where you're giving away pieces of music, you're giving away songs at a time, then you're dispersing that with content. Every time I do a song, I'm gonna do a video. Every time I do a song, I'm gonna do a live video. Every time I do a song, I'm gonna go and do a collab with someone and do a video. And I'm gonna build this up on my YouTube and on my Instagram and on my Facebook page. Not forgetting that people aren't seeing much on Facebook page. People don't want music on Instagram, they just don't. They want stories on Instagram, but YouTube, you can get away with this stuff. But you, oh, as a trifecta, you're pushing all of this stuff to say, here's for you, this is for you, this is for you, this is for you, this is for you. So that down the line, you are building fans and you are not building just mates that go, oh God, yeah, I've got to buy that CD because yeah, I know, I've got to buy your CD, I get it. You're, you're building an audience that goes, I love what you do, I, keep, I wait for your videos and if you're not there, I, get, I just get a little bit despondent because you're not there, I want to see another of your video and every time a, a video notification pops up, oh, I get really excited. That's a fan. When you've got a fan, you can monetize that fan. But you need to realize the point of entry of how hard it is for you to get someone to that fandom. For most people, it isn't just, oh, I just watched a piece of music and now I'm a fan. That is the start of the journey and they need more. They need to see more music. They need to see more of who you are. They need to see more of the story until they get to the point where they go, yeah, yeah, I'm a fan. I want to see more. I want that routine. And then when you start to introduce stuff, the stuff that you introduce that costs money, it needs to provide value. And by that, I don't mean value for you, I mean value for me, the person that's buying it. I'm prepared to buy your stuff for 20 quid if I want it. But if I don't want it, I'm just doing you a favor. That isn't the music industry, that's a friendship. What we want is to make things of value, of beauty, of, of worth. A, a, and a hoodie which is which I would buy anyway because I just think that's amazing that it happens to represent you and the story. I also want that book of all those tour stories that you did because that's fantastic. Anything that you can do like that is merch. And then when you go on tour, you've got people going, of course I want to come and see you play live. I'm following this story. And that's when you start to get people to come to your gigs. 
And if you're saying people don't come to gigs, no, no, they don't come to your gigs. But Ed Sheeran last year played to five million people. And you can, you can look at me like that and you can go, oh, Ed Sheeran. But if someone can get five million people to gigs in one year, then you can get people to gigs if you do the right thing. If you get people into your band. People will come to your gigs if you make something of value and you make them feel part of something and you make them want to come to gigs. If Casey Neistat comes to Brighton and comes to town, am I going to his gig? Yes, yes, I'll be the first person in line because I love Casey Neistat. John Mayer, of course I've got tickets. Of course I have, why wouldn't I? I wanna go and see him play live because I'm following the journey and when that, that value of seeing him play live is for me, not for him. He gets loads of money, brilliant, but the value's for me. And that's what we've got to think of. And the point of entry is much earlier that I've made my music, what do I do with it? You break it up for parts and you spend the next year providing value after value after value, giving it to people, giving them what they want. What do they want? They want to see you. They want to see your journey. They want to see your story. That is the difference between then and now and how that triangle of everything going towards an album, an album is now upside down. The music is at the bottom, but the merch and the tours that's where the money's at. But it's, it's a different level of how much value you need to put in now than it was back then. Let me know your thoughts, but more importantly, do me a favor. I'm loving this sort of, not having the pressure of doing daily videos. I wanna do a bit, of, a bit more stuff. I wanna do some challenge videos coming up, so I've got some exciting ideas. But if you can like, subscribe, more importantly, just come and talk to me in the comments below, because I'd really appreciate that. But have a great day. I'm gonna go enjoy the sunshine. See you soon.